Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, so I want to come on here and talk about the whole Lizzo situation. A lot of y'all have been requesting this video. If you guys do not know, Lizzo was trending all over social media yesterday on Twitter. And basically, people were dragging her because of what she did at the Lakers game this past weekend. So this past weekend, she went to the Lakers game and she basically had on like a t-shirt dress or something. But in the back of this big t-shirt was a big cutout around her butt cheeks. And she was wearing nothing but a thong, okay? So... At first, people were like, okay, Lizzo, you're doing a bit much, sis. You know, why is your whole ass cheeks hanging out? But, you know, people let her do her. So she ended up walking in the arena, and then they started playing her song, Juice. And she decides to get up and start twerking and dancing and carrying on. This entire situation was a hot damn mess. Y'all go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. <laughs> this is how that bitch goes to the Lakers game. Versus Minnesota. <laughs> you bitches can't even spell Minnesota. <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw that video of Lizzo, and you know, a lot of people were upset. So of course she started getting a bunch of backlash. She was getting drugged all over the media. A lot of people had things to say. And you know, at first she was saying, oh, they're only hating on me because I'm fat. If I was skinnier, nobody would care. And some people did run with that narrative. Um, but people were like, no, we're not hating on you because of your size. This is just tacky, okay? So then she decided to come on social media and basically address the backlash. She goes on this eight minute rant. She says she doesn't care what the haters think and what people think of her. Then she proceeds to cry. Y'all go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. You know, who I am and the essence of me and the things that I choose to do as a grown-ass woman can inspire you to do the same. You don't have to be like me. You need to be like you. And never, ever let somebody stop you or shame you from being yourself. Like, this is who I've always been. Now everyone's looking at it. And your criticism can just remain your criticism. Your criticism has no effect on me. Negative criticism has no stake in my life, no control over my life, over my emotions. I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm surrounded by love. And I just want to spread that love and also spread these cheeks. And, you know, if you really, really don't like my ass... You can kiss it, because kissing it makes it go away, I promise. <laughs> um, I just want y'all to know, like, it doesn't matter what goes on on the internet, like, nothing really breaks my joy. I'm a really solid, grounded person, and I know that I'm shocking, because you've never seen in a long time a body like mine doing whatever it wants to do and dressing the way that it dresses and moving the way that it moves. Um, you know, but I don't ever want to censor myself because I'm suddenly famous or I don't want to censor myself because everyone's looking at me now. I'm not going to quiet myself. I'm not going to shrink myself <laughs> because somebody thinks that I'm not sexy to them. <laughs> Man, you really think because somebody on Twitter think that I'm not cute, I'm going to stop existing. <laughs> so, you know, I don't really like to address negativity, but I'm having such a great day and good as hell. Um with the human jukebox and the fabulous dancing dolls is out and um this is like my morning hair and my makeup from last night all smeared and i feel beautiful um in my new house y'all let me show you this real quick period pool good morning
in my king size bed. I'm just, I'm blessed. And I want you to know that you're blessed. I want you to know that you woke up this morning and that's a blessing. I want you to know the sun is shining somewhere. That's a blessing. Even if it's raining, it's cleansing you. It's a blessing. I want you to know that whatever you're going through, if it doesn't feel good, that you will feel good again. And you have, you have whatever it takes to feel good again. You are capable. You deserve to feel good as hell. And you deserve to find that. And um. As proud as you are of me, I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you because life comes at you fast. And sometimes it can be so hard. But if I can make it, I know you can make it. We can make it together. You know, I, I've been so grateful lately. I just, life feels like a dream. Like a beautiful dream. But you know what else felt like a dream? Sleeping in my car. Not eating. Crying myself to sleep. Not having nowhere to live. Not having no money. That felt like a dream too. It felt surreal. I was like, is this my life? I remember when I wanted to just go. I didn't want to exist. I didn't want to be here anymore. And I remember being like, man, it was after my father passed. I was like, if I could just, I just want to be with my dad. Like, I I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to make it. <sighs> I think about those times now and I'm like, Whew. God is so real, y'all. And life can get so much better. I'm so grateful. I've, I'm so grateful for all of the support that I receive from y'all on the internet. Like the support that I receive in real life at my shows, the support that I receive now in the industry, and the support that I've always received in the industry. It just wasn't mainstream. Wow. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep doing whatever the fuck I want to do and I hope that that inspires you to do whatever the fuck you want to do these are happy tears remember I'm crying cause I love you <laughs> don't you forget it I'm crying cause I love you <sighs> alright that's all I wanted to say go watch good as hell Go hug somebody you love. And I hope somebody that loves you hugs you. Um, oh, y'all wanted cheeks. Um, y'all still asking for some of y'all still asking for cheeks. Okay. Um, I mean, what should I do? Should I give a little twerk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do one little twerk for the people that want cheeks. And then I'm going to sign off and enjoy. I have an extended travel day, which means I can chill in my bed for just like a few more hours. Oh, the Lakers game. Let me tell you about that. I had so much fun at the Lakers game. Shout out to the Lakers and shout out to my managers. Kevin and Alana and Full Stop for hooking that up because that was so fun. Me and Shelby had so much fun. We got all dressed up. We were sitting right next to LeBron James. I told him he was the greatest athlete. I was like, you're the greatest. He was like, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> it was so cool to be next to all that man sweat and basketball juice. And then... um I was just chilling, mind our business, eating cheese fries, drinking a margarita. And then um, one of the girls from the Lakers dancers came up to me and was like, Lizzo, um, the Lakers girls, they want 
to perform to your song and we just wanted to know if like that's okay and we just wanted to do this special for you and I was like me and they were like yeah we're gonna do it on the next break and I was like okay like your girls came out and they started dancing the juice and I just got so excited and I wanted to show them how much I appreciate and support and love the fact that they wanted to do that for me. So I stood up and I danced and I turned around and I shook my tanku kwankwa. So I just want you to know like that was, you know, how it all went down. Um, no one was technically ever going to see my butt, but the Laker girls started dancing. So I had to dance too. Um, <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows that I have a good time anywhere I go. Knows that I turn up anywhere I go. Ain't no party like a Lizzo party. All right, so you guys just saw what Lizzo had to say. You know, nothing affects me. Goes on an eight-minute rant and then proceeds to cry tattoo tears and then turn around and say that they're tears of joy, not tears of saltiness, okay? So this is my opinion. I've said this before on my live stream. I feel like a lot of celebrities nowadays, they don't have any decorum. And y'all can say I'm old, I need to get with the times, but I feel like, you know, when we were growing up, celebrities had a certain level of mystique, okay? And there was a time and place for everything. I see folks trying to compare Lizzo to Prince. Are y'all fucking serious? Now they both represent Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? Like me, but she's no Prince. And at the end of the day, Prince wasn't walking around Minnesota Timberwolves games with his ass cheeks out. When he had his ass cheeks out, that was at a musical performance. Hey, baby, I'm a talented boy. You know, you have to know the environment that you're in. Right now, she's walking into the Lakers stadium where there's children there. People are out there with their families and everything else. I don't want my kids seeing Lizzo's ass, point blank, period. If I paid for my ticket, I don't want to see your ass. And on top of that, you're walking around with your bare ass out of this dress, sitting on public seats. When you could have just got off the toilet. We don't know. Like, you know, there just has to be a level of decorum. It has nothing to do with her size. So I hate that excuse. Oh, y'all are only dragging her because she's bigger. First, let me say this. Lizzo is a beautiful woman. I'm talking about her face, her features. She's a really pretty girl. There's nothing ugly about Lizzo. I feel like Lizzo is doing too much and she's trying to overcompensate, okay? She posted pictures the other day with tape on her nipples and a fishnet outfit with her ass hanging out, laying on a couch or some shit. I'm not into stuff like that. I don't like when skinny celebrities do it. How many times have I drugged Kim Kardashian, okay? I've drugged other celebrities for doing the same thing, and their bodies are, you know, what you would call on point. They're slim people. My thing is there needs to be a level of decorum, and I just feel like it's just a bit much. And then with this whole Lizzo thing, you have to respect the environment that you're in. You're in a family environment. This is not the club. This is not one of your shows. When you're on that stage, you do what you want to do. But when you're coming into the Lakers stadium, there needs to be a respect factor. And when you're on the jumbotron, you know what I'm saying, twerking and, and got your ass cheeks out. It wasn't even so much the twerking because the twerking was cute. I'm here for the twerking. But it was the fact that, you know what I'm saying, this is not a strip club. This is a basketball game. You're taking attention away from the basketball players. Not everything's about Lizzo as opposed to the game. I don't even know who the hell won, to be honest with you. I haven't even bothered to check because the only thing people can talk about is Lizzo. You know, so the whole situation is crazy. And then I'm also tired of this term haters. Every time you don't agree with something that a celebrity does or you call them out, then you're a hater. You're just jealous. Let her live her best life. Everything ain't hate. Some things are just the truth. Remember the song, Truth Hurts? Some things are just the truth. While I like Lizzo, I like her music, I do feel like she's trying to overcompensate for something and she's doing a bit much. You know what I'm saying? And it's not okay. Like, nobody, for the most part, is attacking her besides Azealia Banks when she keeps going off on her Connor Fat Lizzo. Sidebar, I see you fat fucking Lizzo. I see what you're trying to fucking do. You stole cupcake swag, bitch. And now you all out here talk about I'm female rapper. You ain't no fucking female rapper, bitch. You don't got enough fucking sex appeal to be no fucking female rapper. Don't let Craig Kalman gas you, Lizzo. You still fucking a fat, boring. You still a fat, boring hipster rapper, bitch. You're not fucking with cupcake. You're not eating cupcake. And I'm sorry, I know that's really why. That's really the reason why cupcake feeling like she wanna quit. Because she see her all her fucking magic being fucking torn to fucking shreds by Fat Lizzo. I hate you, Fat Lizzo. I fucking hate you, girl. I hate you for coming out with that floss up your fucking fat ass. 
that's really been the only person attacking her. But before this, nobody was really attacking her antics or going in on her for the things that she did on stage because, again, that was her stage show. But when you're going into a basketball game, a basketball arena with families and small children, you're going to have the mainstream media and the public call you out. And I feel like that's why she's crying. She's trying to play tough girl. But low key, she's salty because it backfired. You know, I don't care about the outfit, but why have your cheeks hanging out in that type of environment? So every time somebody checks somebody, it's not hating, it's pulling your coattails. And let's not forget that as black women, we're always seen as overtly sexual anyways. So why do we always have to play into that archetype? And Azealia Banks made it known when I talked about it a few videos ago that Lizzo was playing the fat mammy, you know, archetype. You know, so it's like you're playing into that persona, you're playing into that archetype when honestly your music is good, you're pretty, you can sing, like let that be the focus. Anytime I see somebody having to use their sexuality overtly and over and over again and constantly, at that point, I feel like you're just trying to cover up your insecurities because people who are secure with themselves, people who know who they are, you don't have to walk around in public with your ass cheeks out. You don't have to, you know, there's just certain things you don't have to do. So I feel like there's some insecurities there that she needs to address and she's trying to put on a facade like she's so secure when she's not. So again, this is not hate for Lizzo. I'm coming from a place of love and I hope that she takes it as just a learning lesson to not do it again. You know what I'm saying? Let it be about the music. I'm, I'm tired of these celebrities and their antics. I'm tired of celebrities trying to do anything to go viral to get their names trending in the blogs. It's not okay. At some point in time, there needs to be a level of decor them. We need to learn how to start carrying ourselves again. I'm not saying everybody got to be perfect patties and, you know, uh, dress straight lace. I'm not saying that. There's room to be sexy and explore your sexuality. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's a time and place for everything. And certain things are not meant for the internet. Certain things are not meant for the real world. And that's just my opinion on the whole Lizzo situation. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Lizzo basically catching flack for, for walking around in a dress with the butt cheeks cut out, showing her thong. Do you feel like Lizzo is showing her confidence? Or do you feel like Lizzo is doing the most and that it's not okay? There's a time and place for everything. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And most importantly, honey, hit that notification bell so that way you can be down with the notification squad so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces